Welcome to Haxby Shed. You'll have to excuse me today because I've got a cold. I've been trying to throw it off for three or four days. I'll try not to cough and splutter too much. So the project for today is to work on this cylinder head from a Golf Mark II GTI. It's for my son's project car. You may have seen it before. I made an adapter to get the valves out quite some time ago now. But he tends to work on the car in the winter and he drives it in the summer. So we're coming around to, you know, the end of the season and he's thinking about it. Now the latest bit of work I want to do in it is over at this end, and I'll show you in just a moment, the face on the end of the head where the water jacket connects is quite corroded. And uh, I said to my son, well that's fine, just put some epoxy in there and fill up the holes with epoxy. And he was horrified. I don't know why, because it kind of works, doesn't it? But all right, I said, I'll have a go at TIG welding it and then I'll just machine it flat again. So this will be the first time that I've tried any proper aluminium TIG welding on a job. Everything up to now has been practice. So let's have a look, I'll show you what the job is. This face here is all pitted and corroded. There's quite a deep hole there. So what I'm planning to do is to use this kind of Dremel copy, which I bought from a discount supermarket for next to nothing, and see if I can grind these out to get it all clean. If this doesn't work, I'll try something else. And then TIG it all around here, and then put it on the shaper and machine it flat again. I'm going to try a different tool. I think I bought this tool for about £15. Now if you want that in US dollars or euros, add 10% as of now. But we've got another mini budget today, so goodness knows what it'll be by tea time. Well that's the major work done, now I'm going to sand off this surface, see where we've got to, but I do have to get it absolutely clean otherwise it's just not going to weld properly. I guess this is making you a bit seasick, but what else can I do? I was hoping that this cylinder head would clamp into my universal wooden welding bench, but unfortunately not. So I've just dropped it on top of a motorbike stand, like a maintenance stand. Um, and then I'll choose what I think is the cleanest part and we'll just have a go and see if I can weld it at all. My son isn't bothered if I melt this to, you know, one blob of metal because it's not as good as he thought it was anyway. He only paid £50 for it. Just before I try to weld that cylinder head, I'm going to put in a bit of a video clip where I talk about practicing on this piece of plate. Before I try and weld that cylinder head, I need to do some practice with aluminium welding. Now I've never made any serious attempt at aluminium welding. This is the first time I'm doing it on a real job. This is a bit of plate I practiced on some time ago, and this is actually the underside of the welds that I made here. So today I started here, and that was with continuous current, and obviously it's a real mess. But then I tried pulse. Now I've never tried pulse before in any form of TIG welding, so it's just adding to my experience. And straight away I got this. So we went from this to this just by changing to pulse. I and mean, it's kind of miraculous really. So I tried some runs. This was not burning in enough. Um, this was my last run. So I'm sure you've got some <laughs> complaints about it and comments anyway. But, you know, I've, the time difference between this and this was about three minutes. So I'm very pleased with this. And I think, should I need to do a weld like this, 
you know, on an edge, I think I could probably have a, a go at it. Um, so now I've got the confidence to have a go at that cylinder head. Right, for anybody who wants to know, I'm going to try 135 amps, pulse, 40% on time, 0.7 second period, 35% clean, number 6 cup, 5 litres per minute gas. Am I going to use this or this for filler? This is a bit thicker of course. Don't know yet, do I? But I'm going to try welding this bit here. If this works okay, I'll probably finish cleaning the rest and fill it. I should clarify, not fill it, fill it. How confusing. I have used acetone by the way. Seems a bit pointless on this mucky thing, but better try and get it right, eh? Here it goes. I'll try one of these more shallow holes first. God, it's got a bent end on it, never mind. Here it goes. Well, it's kind of worked. I haven't melted it all away, but I think it was running a bit cold, so I've turned it up to 150 amps. Well, I can see a few mistakes I was making. I mean, particularly, I was pulling the rod out of the gas shield and contaminating the work, so I need to keep it much closer. And also, I'm going to go to this thinner rod. And also, where I was working here, with a deep hole like this deep hole here, I'm sure I've created a cavity. It looks fine from the surface. I think when I machine it, I'll find a hole. But it's going better than I expected. I didn't melt through this edge here. So I'm going to keep going, actually. Work my way around and then work with whatever I've got. Stupid mistake. Must be fast jets day. Oh dear. I'm going to try working clockwise. I seem to be a bit better at that. Would you believe it? The blooming filler wires got stuck on the camera power supply. Honestly. In the finish there, I turned that up to 175 amps and I think I should even go higher than that. But I do know I've got some cavities. I'm certain I've got one here and maybe one over here. So what I'm going to do now is machine that off and see what I've got and then go back and fill in the holes that I'm sure are there. I haven't done any shaping on the shaper for quite a long time so this is quite exciting. That'll go on there like that. Now I can use the head stud positions. I've got these two bolts with T-nuts on the end here and they're just the right size for what I'm trying to do. Can you see those two T-nuts there? If I get them lined up and into this slot, we'll be okay. Excuse me. Ah, <laughs> not quite. Give me a second. It just makes things a bit easier if I take this stud out because it's catching the bottom tray of the shaper. I've got to lean across you, I'm afraid, to do this. There we are. Oh, perfect. Well, of course, there isn't the space to get this socket in. <laughs> we don't have any Torx head bolts, so it's going to have to be a socket. This is my son's 3 8 drive socket, which is quite thin-walled. But it still won't go in between the webs here. Not right down to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is pack it out, pack this bolt out with some washers, and I think we'll still have enough thread. I got there in the end. 
I had to find a longer bolt for this side and then I used lots of spacing washers to be able to get the socket onto the heads and not catching the web in here and then I line it up square with a square on there so I think we're ready to go now I need to set up the cut I have had a look at it already I think this will be okay I'm just taking the tops off That's my bit of paper I stuffed in the hole, picking up there. I just livened it up a bit. Do you know, I don't think I need to weld this again. There's a little mark there, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because there is an O-ring on this cover. I bet it'll miss that. So if I just polish this a little bit, I think it's done. Well overall that's gone pretty well. Just clean this thread out here and this one here as well. Maybe next time you uh, have a video from me I'll have my voice back. You know if I was welding this again I would still take the current up a bit. Maybe even as high as 200 amps which is a good reason, good thing, that I got the 200 amp welder and not the 170 amp welder. Come on, don't want to cross thread this at this stage. Here we go, come on. There we are. Well, I think next I'll need to see the cap that goes on here and just see where the O-ring goes. I mean, if it comes out to here, or it's as close as that, should I really say. Maybe it would have a problem. Don't know. Look how far this sticks out. It's quite a thick web. I could take quite a lot more off this if I wanted to. Now, having done that for my son, he then said, well, <laughs> what about this one? Well, really? Well, okay, um, but it's not so corroded and it's pretty thick here. And I think I can just do a machine skim over the top on the shaper. So it should be a fairly quick job. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? So I've got a bed clamp on there and a bed clamp at the back as well. And then these two long straps and this piece of wood here. And this ain't going anywhere. I'll just start with a 0.1 of a mil cut and see where we are. never get this ram back to the end when you want to. Well that's pretty good isn't it? Okay look I'm gonna go and do a 0.2 mil cut now and that might even be the finish. Maybe another 0.2. Well, that's left just one tiny mark there. It's not worth going after that. I think that'll be fine. In the finish, I took about a millimetre off there. More than I expected, but this web is plenty thick enough. You know, on these videos, I always resist the temptation to comment on politics. But at the moment, I think everybody would agree that politics in the UK is a bit of a farce. And somebody asked recently, will Liz Truss last as long as a lettuce? Well, she resigned yesterday, I think. And I can tell you that the lettuce is doing just fine. I hope that was useful.